Hello everyone and welcome back to Lucky Loaders 15 where I'll be giving you four of my best bets for tomorrow's racing. Now I just want to apologise first of all for not coming out with a profit today. It all started really well uh, with our Nat Brad the Brief winning quite nicely at uh, Haydock for Richard Kingscote and Tom Daskin. Richard Kingscote had a really good day today. I think he had four winners at Haydock. And he's always a jockey to follow at the course. He's got a fantastic strike rate there. And it was a nice performance by Brad the Brief. He will go up in the handicap, but I think he could still be a 100-plus horse in time. And it was interesting to see uh, what the connection said in the interview. Richard Kingscote said that possibly Tom Daskin might step him up into a listed or a group race later on in the end of the year. And I think he could definitely hold his own. But I'd like to see him maybe go for a race like the Air Gold Cup, because I think he's got a fantastic attitude, especially in the finish. He never gives up. He's got a willing, determined attitude. And that was his fourth win from five starts. After that, we were just on a down, downward hill, really. Uh, assets at uh, Chelmsford, not really sure about him, to be honest. I'm not going to back him next time. I'm not going to give him another chance. I, even though he did have a wide trip, I just think he's a horse that doesn't really have a willing attitude, even though he, he does look fairly handicapped still, off a mark in the high 50s. So I'm not really sure about him, but uh, yeah, I won't be backing him again. Fuchsia, I thought she she was well too keen. She looked okay on the way down to post. She wasn't really pulling, um, pulling for Dan Muscat, but he got her in a fair position, but she just wasn't good enough. And then Bondi Sands, I thought he ran okay, actually, and he is one to keep on side with next time out. He finished fourth at, in fourth place at Haydock, off a mark in the low 70s. Um, now, he was quite badly outpaced at one point, um, but he is a horse uh, that is going to need a really long trip. He'll probably need a, a slightly further. That trip today was over a mile and a half, and he'll probably need a mile and six, probably two miles in time. But I think he definitely will have um, some races later in the year to be won. So he's still definitely one to keep on side. I could see him running well at a track like Hamilton, for example, up on the front end. He doesn't maybe have a great change of gears, but he's just a grinder and he could keep grinding it out from the front. And I think he'll come forward for the run as well. So I thought his performance was OK because at one point he did look like he was going to fade away out the back of the telly. But he stayed on strongly in the end and he just uh, got a uh, fourth place. So Joe Fannin, he didn't give him the towel. And like I said, this horse, I think he's still a bit of a slow burner, but definitely one to keep in the tracker. Then I just watched the Sashenka at uh, Lingfield. Quite disappointed, to be honest with you. Like, all good each way bets, uh, especially with the extra place as well. Uh, paying out four places. She finished in fifth place. She wasn't really um, showing her turn of foot that she's done before. And I just think the race didn't suit her, to be honest. I think the slowly run race, it didn't help her. I think she needed it to be a bit more fast, uh, run at a more faster pace. And I think the reason they did that was uh, for Desert Caravan. The jockeys wanted to get him beat. He was a very uh, well-fancied favourite, but he could only muster a fourth-place finish for William Haggis. Um, and I'm not sure, actually, the trip is what he wanted anyway. I think a mile, mile and two was as far as he wants. I don't think um, a mile and a half would have been his game because he is by Oasis Stream, who you normally associate with uh, sprinters. So, yeah, um, definitely a bit of a frustrating day today after a promising start. But we're going to get straight into the tips for tomorrow where I'll be giving you four and I will be outlying my case. Some of you will be aware that my uh, nap uh, we'll be running tomorrow and I think it is the best handicapped horse in Britain so sorry if I go on a, for a rant about it but I honestly can't wait for this horse to run tomorrow and I think he's definitely going to be one to follow throughout the season and he could potentially end up in a race like the Ebor so uh, I'll explain um, him in a minute but we'll start off tomorrow with my next best which runs in the 145 at Haydock with a horse called Arctic Vega. Now, I know this is short, 15 to 8, but I think it's definitely got a very good chance of following up tomorrow. Trained by Andrew Bolden, whose horses can do no wrong at the moment, running really well, uh, had plenty of winners, operating around about 25% strike rate, and O'Sheen Murphy's but for the ride. Now, I was at Kempton when this horse won on debut um, for the evening racing. If, uh, if we ever can go racing again, I would recommend going there. On a Wednesday night, you can sit in the hospitality area 
uh, have a burger and chips for, for 25 quid. It's a good, it's a good night. Actually, I really enjoyed it because I've never been there on an, on an evening card before. But yeah, like I said, I really enjoyed it. And I saw this horse, Arctic Vega, won very easily in the end. Uh, and is by Lope de Vega, obviously, as, as in the name. But uh, I thought, even though he didn't beat much, he did it in a really nice manner. And I think he's definitely a horse to follow this season. He won't have to carry a £7 penalty for that run. But I don't think um, the rivals in this race tomorrow will be up to much. Even though there are some powerhouse names represented from some good yards, I just don't think they're as good enough as him. And he's the he's the one with the form in the bag. Even though, like I said, he didn't beat much. The Marcus Tregoning horse came out and won at Lingfield last week. So the form's not looking too bad, even though the horses in behind have been given quite a low rating. Uh, but Arctic Vega, I still think he's got massive of potential. And at 15 away, I think he can get the job done. And that does represent value. I wouldn't be at all surprised tomorrow if come post time, he's touching even money. So he's going to be my next best bet. So we then go into my nap in the Wolverhampton at seven o'clock. And this is a horse that I'm so excited. I've never been so excited about a horse uh, before in my career as a journalist. Um, I'm really excited about it. And that is Caravan of Hope in the seven o'clock at Wolverhampton. Now, if you've already listened to my case on on the, in the Saddle podcast, you might want to skip forward. But this horse is the best handicapped horse in Britain by a country mile. Uh, he's trained by Hugo Palmer, and they've booked Paul Mulrennan tomorrow, which isn't a bad jockey booking, but I would have thought maybe they would have tried to get someone like Jason Watson or Tom Marquand, you know, uh, one of these more established jockeys. But Paul Mulrennan, he is a Group 1 winning jockey after all, but um, you wouldn't normally associate with him riding out for uh, Hugo Palmer. Now, um, this horse is rated off a mark of 85, and this horse is incredibly well handicapped. I think he should even be rated 90 going into this race tomorrow. And to be honest, I think the connections have planned this race quite carefully for him because they want to protect his handicap mark. He had an entry uh, at Haydock and Chelmsford, I believe, for today. Um, and uh, he didn't take those up. And the reason that was because they were looking at, I think, what horses were running in that race and what would be the dangers. And I thought that really this was their best option. And I'm glad that they've gone for it. He is drawn out in stall 12 tomorrow, but over the longer trips, that's no issue at all. The key to him is, is stamina. He's going to be running over a mile and six tomorrow. And eventually I think he'll get two miles. Now, if you go back through his form last year, this is why he is Britain's best handicapped horse. He bumped into a horse of Alan King's called Trushan, who's now rated 109. And Trushan, um, they first met at Wolverhampton, and Trushan just got the better of him by half a length. And that's good that he finished second at Wolverhampton, because we know he handles all weather, and we know he's going to be okay tomorrow at the course. Now, Trushan is, like I said, rated 109, and that's £24 higher um, than he is now. And then they went and met again, uh, not so long after, at uh, Foss Lass, where, um, again, that day, there wasn't that much in between them. There was only two lengths, and they beat a horse called Alignac of Sir Michael Stouts. Now, Alignac went on to win his next two starts. He won on the all-weather at Kempton, and then he went and won... Um, at uh, Newcastle last week, and he's going to be rated now in the mid 90s. So, you're telling me a horse that beat a horse that is now 95 by six lengths shouldn't shouldn't be higher than him. It doesn't make sense. Anyway, Caravan of Hope, after their Foss last run, which worked out really well, he went on to win a race. He just got up in the nick of time, but he went and won a race at Ascot, beating a horse called Penissimo for John Gosden, who was in the Queen's Colours. Now, that horse transferred stables to Anthony Carson, and that horse went and won his next two starts for Anthony Carson on the weather at big prices, but... He went and won him, and his his rating is now in the low 90s. And he had good form tied in with Rainbow Dreamer, who again is an Alan King horse and was winning all weather fast track qualifiers. And he now is rated in the in the hundreds. So you got to think this horse is extremely well handicapped off a mark of 85. Now I've I've looked into the, some of the plans, some of the quotes around this horse, um, and he's 
potentially uh, could be lining up for the Northumberland plate if they do run it. I think he would be a really good bet for that race. And I think he's definitely potential Ebor material. You can get him at 50 to 1 at the current time of recording. But I unearthed this horse a couple of weeks ago when I was doing research for my tote 10. And I do remember him from last season, but he kind of just went under the radar. And I should say as well, after he went on to win at Ascot, he then went on to win at Doncaster. And he was only put up a few pounds for that. And he won with any amount in hand. Uh, Andrea Azani was on board that day and he barely shook the reins. Um, it was a very comfortable victory on soft ground. Now, um, he probably might want a bit of cut in the ground, but I think he's a really versatile horse. He's by Nathaniel. He's going to improve. But like I said, I found him a couple of weeks ago uh, with his handicap mark. And I was thinking, what horses could improve? Because as part of the tote 10 to follow, if you're going to enter that competition, you've got to go and um, you've, you've got to have a handicapper. And one of the bonus races um, is over two miles. And I just couldn't believe how well handicapped this horse was. And I've been keeping an eye out for him. And I just think he's going to land a really big one. And I, I hope I have convinced you. But he's currently 7-4 at the moment. He was 5-2 to two earlier. But at the time I'm recording this video, it's only fair that I give you the correct prices at the time of recording. He is 7-4. to four, And I think he'll go off odds on tomorrow. If you see this, you want to be backing him. But uh, I just hope tomorrow he runs a good race. But like I said, I don't think there's really any dangers in here tomorrow. And he should be winning this race if, he, if he's going to confirm the form from last season um he should have 10 pound in hand compared to all his rivals i think he is a 100 rated plus horse in the making he probably need the run but i think he's definitely the one they've all got to beat in the race if he finished second tomorrow and just bumps into one i'm not going to be put off by him because his form last season is really good um but he should be like i said if he's anywhere near the level i think he is he should be winning this race and i'm so excited tomorrow um i've never like i said i've i think i've unearthed a good one here and uh, he is going to be mine that tomorrow uh, given both bullets but in the point system win bets are only one point so that's how it's going to work and stay anyway enough of me uh, getting excited about the nap we then go to the 715 at Chelmsford and this is going to come in the extra column and um, we're going to go with a horse here called Cosmelli now this horse is at currently 12 to 1 best odds at the moment you can get four places with sky bet and this horse is trained by Gay Kellaway and Kieran O'Neill. Now, I love this horse. Some of you might remember I put him up on my Twitter feed last week when he finished in fourth place with the extra place as well at Newcastle. He probably just needed a bit longer that day and he actually bumped into Alignac. So, yeah, all these form lines, they, they tie in. Um, but Cosmelli, anyway, um, he's only run once of this track and um, he won and that was earlier this year off a mark of 85 now he is rated three pounds higher tomorrow off a mark of 88 but if you actually go back for his form last season and the season before he's extremely well handicapped he won the northumberland plate constellation race off a mark of 94 and then he actually ran in the northumberland plate last year off an eight higher eight pound higher mark and he ran a respectable sixth place and he was only touched out in the closing stages. He looked like he could still win it going into the last furlong. But it was just a struggle for everything coming back. But this race, there are some good horses in here, I'm not going to lie. Obviously, Hugo Palmer's Collide will be very popular for a lot of people. And there are one or two nice other horses. Clap your hands for David Simcock is a horse I've got plenty of time for. Well, I just thought Cosmelli, with a recent run under his belt, he's going to be ready to go. He's well handicapped. He's run well on the track on his only start. One out of one. Going up and trip as well will help. He ran, like I said, a good race last time out to finish fourth at Newcastle. And at 12 to 1, I think that's an outstanding value. And as my extra bet tomorrow, I'm going to recommend an each way selection with the four places. We then end with my long shot tomorrow in the 8.30 at Wolverhampton with a horse called Precision Prince. I hope that's how you say it because I can't read my handwriting. Anyway, it'll be in the description box below the correct spelling. But it's currently 14 to 1 with bookmakers at the moment. And this horse is trained by Mark Lochnane and Dougie Costello is put for the ride. Now, some of you might have listened to my interview with Dougie um, a couple of weeks ago on the In the Saddle podcast. And I had a great chat with him. It went on for about 45 minutes. But uh, he's a great talker, Dougie. And he's well worth listening. You should go and check it out if you haven't done so already. But yeah, Dougie Costello 
So I've got bags of time for. Now this horse, uh, tomorrow that he's riding, um, forgive its most recent efforts where it came over hurdles, not all horses that run on the flat take to hurdling, but when he's run on the all-weather, he's run all right actually. He's uh, had nine career starts on the all-weather and he's got two wins. And one of those wins came at Wolverhampton off a three pound higher mark. And he's gonna be running off a mark of 56 tomorrow. That victory came off 59 and that was over slightly shorter. And when he won that day, he was running on really strong at the end over a trip that may have been too short he's never competed on the weather um off uh off this distance before over a mile and a half and i think he's still unexposed on the flat and he's got a bit more to give and i don't think the fielder in here i'm up to much and dougie costello is a really interesting jockey book and i actually know his agent so um yeah i'm quite interested to know um if there was any reason why they booked him on it but anyway mark lot name um is a trainer as well that Again, underrated in my opinion. He's already had a winner since racing's resumed, so his yard are off the mark. So definitely a lot of positives in this horse's box tomorrow. And at 14-1, to 1, again, I think that's a big price. And that's why he's going to be my long shot bet tomorrow. I recommend each way. And I wouldn't be at all surprised if he went and won, actually. I think he's got a cracking chance of making a major major bid to win the race and for me like i said he represents massive value anyway they're my four best bets uh for tomorrow uh we'll start off just quickly recapping haydock 145 my next best arctic vega 15 to 8 next best that will be we'll then go to my nap in the seven o'clock at wolverhampton which is caravan of hope again can't can't tell you how excited i am about that one we then go to chelmsford for the 715 cosmelli as my extra bet 12 to 1, four places each way. And then we end in the Wolverhampton 8.30 race with Precision Prince, 14 to 1, long shot bet each way. So anyway, they're the four best bets for tomorrow's horse race in action. If you haven't done so already, please hit the subscribe button for more videos here on my YouTube channel, YouTube channel at LuckyLoaders15. You can also follow me as well on social media where my handle on Twitter is also at LuckyLoaders15. You can check out my website as well, which is www.chrisloaderacing.co.uk uk for a full portfolio of my work please gamble responsibly and we'll be seeing you soon